ever walk down thrift store aisles and think, nothing here for me? Well, maybe you should take another look because those shelves are overflowing with hidden gems just waiting to be transformed into beautiful home decor for your walls. Forget expensive artwork. We're not paying $2,000 for a framed dish towel. Instead, with a little creativity, we can turn forgotten treasures into statement pieces that will add personality and style to our homes. So, let's get started and transform our thrifted finds into unique and amazing wall art. I'm on a mission to repurpose and save pretty hand-embroidered items from the thrift store. And shame on you if you've given away your grandma's embroidered hankies or tea towels. I thrifted this little guest towel for only $1. To display it, I found a piece of picket fencing in my wood scraps. And then I cut out a rectangle of foam board to fit on the piece of wood. I placed the piece of fabric on the foam board and wrapped the edges over to the back side. I hot glued three of the edges to the foam board, but I left one side open so that I could push a little pillow stuffing in between the fabric and the foam board. Then I hot glued the fourth edge closed. To attach the piece of fabric to the fencing, I added a few staples along the edges. And then to clean up the edges, I cut four strips of Dollar Tree jute ribbon and hot glued them along the edges, concealing the staples. Because there wasn't a lot of color in the embroidery, I thought it would be cute to glue a green velvet bow in the corner to add an additional pop of color. And finally, I added a sawtooth hanger on the back so I could hang the piece of fencing on the wall. I thrifted this, what I'm going to call a wall box, for $1.99. The finish on it was scratched and shipped, so the first thing I did was give it a couple coats of white spray paint. I wanted to decoupage a pattern on the front of the box and decided to use this blue and white napkin. To decoupage a napkin, pull the top pattern ply away from the white layers and cut or tear the napkin into small pieces. I cut four small strips. Brush Mod Podge onto your item and carefully place the napkin into the Mod Podge. Then use your brush to smooth out any wrinkles and to apply additional Mod Podge over the top of the napkin. Repeat this process until your item is covered. Let the Mod Podge dry. Then use sanding paper or a sanding block along the edges to remove the excess napkin. For something unexpected, I want to display this blue willow cup inside the box. But first, I wanted to add some faux flowers and greenery. I added a piece of styrofoam to the cup and then stuck in some previously thrifted florals. And then I just hot glued some sheet moss to cover the styrofoam. To create wall art using a thrift store plate, I applied a typography rub-on transfer to the white center of the plate. The new IOD Lover of Flowers packet contains several poem transfers about flowers. To display the plate, I'm going to use this metal wall decor piece, but first I spray painted it pale blue. Then I brushed it with white wax and wiped off the excess. To attach the plate to the metal piece, I first attached a plate hanger to the plate 
and then I removed the springs, leaving just the two brackets. I set the metal wall decor over the plate, making sure the plate was perfectly centered in the design. Then I took some heavy florist wire and wired the brackets to the metal design, twisting the wire until it was firm and tight. Since there was a rose design on the plate, and the poem transfer was about roses, I decided to wire a few faux roses in the corner too. Then I just tied on some ribbon to conceal the wire. is one of my favorite ideas for combining two thrift store picture frames, especially if the frames are already missing their glass. Take the backing out of the larger frame and cover it with gift wrap, wallpaper, contact paper, or fabric. I'm using a leftover piece of peel and stick wallpaper, so I didn't even need any adhesive. The edges will be concealed by the frame, so just quickly cut off the extra paper. Next, paint both frames in a color that coordinates with your paper. I'm using the Tate Green chalk paint that I had left over from painting the armoire in last week's video. While the paint on the frames dries, let's go ahead and print out a vintage bird image to put inside that smaller frame. And I want a high quality picture, so I'm going to print it out on my new Lian Photo Printer. Lian Photo Printers use thermal dye sublimation, which basically means that the dyes deeply penetrate the paper so that the picture is really vibrant. I find the Lian printer to be really user friendly. It has its own Wi-Fi hotspot, so you can connect directly to the printer without other networks. It supports up to five devices and is compatible with iOS, Android, laptops, and PCs. As you can see, the paper runs through the machine a couple times as it applies the ink in separate layers. And the last layer actually protects the photo from water, scratches, and fading. And it works great whether you're printing out vintage artwork or family photos. Once the paint on the frames was dry, I lightly sanded over them and then brushed on some watered-down antiquing wax and wiped away the excess wax with a cloth. I removed all of the hardware from the back of the small frame and just used paper packing tape to attach the photo to the back of the frame. I measured and marked in pencil the center of the wallpaper to determine where to place the small frame, and then I just attached it with hot glue. I reinserted the piece into the larger frame there was no hardware on this frame to hold the backing in place, so I carefully stapled into the frame, and then I used a flathead screwdriver to pull the staples out a bit and press them down against the backing. Finally, I applied paper packing tape along the edges and over the staples for additional support. For this next project, I'm going to use a thrifted tray in place of a picture frame. I think this had been used in a bathroom because it had a little water damage. I gave it two coats of cashew chalk paint and lightly sanded it when the paint was dry. I also drilled two small holes on the back side and attached a small sawtooth hanger. For the artwork, I'm going to use these ceramic coasters. 
first, I use some sandpaper to roughen up the top surface of each coaster. I hadn't planned on removing the design, but I was surprised at how easily it came off. Next, I printed out some vintage tile designs. I usually use antique dovetile images, but I thought I'd use some more colorful ones this time. Just print out the tile images on regular copy paper in a size to fit your tiles. I use the Print to Size app to adjust the size of the images, making them just slightly larger than the tile. Brush Mod Podge onto the tile and to the back of the paper, and then place the paper on the tile, carefully smoothing it out. Fold any extra paper over the edges and apply some additional Mod Podge to make sure they stay put. Let the tiles dry and then apply an additional top coat of Mod Podge. Originally, I wasn't planning on removing the cork backing, but when I went to attach the tiles to the tray, I changed my mind. Luckily, I was able to quickly scrape off the cork with a razor blade scraper. Now, with a smooth backside, the tiles will easily adhere to the tray. And for a strong hold, I attach them with E6000 glue and let them dry in place overnight. This was already a cute little mirror, but rather ordinary. So let's turn it into something completely unique. First, I brush some antiquing wax over the frame to disguise some of the scratches and chips. Then I remove the label holder and put it in a bin of miscellaneous hardware because you know I'll be using it in a future project. I rummaged through my wood scraps and found this random wood chunk that I thought was the perfect size to create a small shelf. I played around with the placement and then attached it to the mirror frame by nailing through the back side into the wood chunk. You could see some of the screw holes where the hardware had been, so I hot glued some small bits of moss in those spots. Then I pulled out some faux succulent plants and glued them into the cracks of the wood, adding some additional moss to help hold them in place. I went to grab a votive candle to sit on top of the wood chunk and found a mushroom candle from Home Goods that I had forgotten I had. How serendipitous! Now, let's create wall art by combining a thrift store wicker basket and picture frame. This frame had no glass or backing, so I created a back by tracing around the inner portion of the frame onto a piece of foam board and cutting it out. Next, I printed out a vintage portrait image to fit inside the frame. I made sure I selected one that was in the public domain and I cut out the portrait and then used glue stick to adhere it to the foam board. Have you seen these butterfly embellished portraits in stores? Well, I thought I would duplicate that look by applying some butterfly transfers to my portrait. Many transfer packages include butterflies, and the IOD entomology package has several. Although I liked how it turned out, I wish I had chosen more brightly colored butterflies that would have stood out more against the portrait. I removed the hardware from the back of the frame and just used hot glue to hold the foam board in place. I did this because the hardware stuck out a bit, and I wanted the frame to lie flat against the wicker basket. 
For strong adhesion, I applied a good amount of wood glue to the back of the frame and then placed it in the center of the basket. Just know that some of the glue is going to drip through the wicker, so be sure to place the basket on some scrap paper or cardboard to dry. Now, let's take this wall decor up another notch. You could use store-bought butterflies, but I printed out some butterfly images on cardstock, making sure to print out two images of each butterfly. And to save time, I cut them out on my Cricut machine. Then I used glue stick to attach the two identical butterflies together with the printed design on the outside. Hot glue the paper butterflies to the wicker basket and to the frame if you like. Finally, run some twine through the wicker to create an easy way to hang the basket from the wall. These chicken wire frames were so popular a few years ago. To give it some cottage appeal, I'm going to pull apart some of the faux florals and greenery off of this thrift store wreath. I started by arranging some fake vines along the bottom and up one side of the frame, and then stapled them in place. Then I began arranging the leaves and flowers over the vine and I also stapled them in place. If some of your fabric leaves are looking raggedy, you can easily trim the edges up with a pair of scissors. I made sure all the staples were in the lower left corner so I could easily conceal them with, you guessed it, a bird's nest. To attach it, I just ran some florist wire through the nest and then twisted and tied the wire around the vines. And of course, we can't leave the nest empty. So let's add some eggs and moss and a butterfly. I like to use the top transparent portion of Dollar Tree butterfly stickers, but am I the only one who can't find these at Dollar Tree this year? For a finishing touch, you could clip a photo to the chicken wire, but I clipped on a poem that I tore from an old book that I use specifically for crafts. I liked this wide wood frame, but not the artwork inside, so I cut through the craft paper on the back side to reveal the staples holding the art print in place. For this project, I'm not going to be using the glass either, but I did need something sturdier than cardboard to fill the opening, so I used a jigsaw to cut a small square from a piece of hardboard. I added it to the frame and then I spray painted the entire piece with two coats of green spray paint, followed by a clear top coat. Once the top coat was dry, I selected another poem from the Lover of Flowers transfers to apply to the hardboard center. I wanted a large floral transfer that would cover the frame and part of the hardboard so I chose a white rose that I had left over from the brocante transfers. The transfers do tend to crack when you're trying to go from one level to another, so I first applied the transfer to the frame and then cut out the remaining portion of the design and applied it to the hardboard separately. Okay, let's rewind and try this project again. There were still some cracks in the transfers, so I decided to sand over the frame to give it a more naturally aged appearance, and I completely sanded off the poem. It was a little crooked, and it was really bothering me, so for the second try, I made sure to draw a straight line on the hardboard 
and line up one of the lines on the transfer paper with that pencil line. For a cohesive look, I lightly sanded over the typography too. Then I sealed the piece by rubbing on some clear wax with a soft cloth. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll let me know which of today's projects was your favorite. And if you enjoyed today's video, here's another one I think you'll like. Thank you.